Okay, what I have here is a pretty cool little jewel thief type circuit that I was working on. Um, I've got everything kind of closed up right now. Uh, maybe I can open it after I'm done uh, showing this. But I've just basically got a e cord, a small transformer, uh, working as my jewel thief. Um, they're definitely not the same ohms, uh, the primary and the secondary. One has much more ohms than the other. Um, but I'm just using those as a basic jewel thief circuit. And what I did was I had another Fairwrite transformer, a small one, and um, I took the primary of that one and put that in line with the base of my jewel thief. And what I also did was I took the secondary off that little transformer and put a capacitor across there and used that winding um, to run this little indicator light. So basically I've got an inductor with a secondary in line with my base resistance on the jewel thief and the secondary of that inductor is uh, able to <clears throat> cycle some good little current to light a little LED without uh, drawing any extra from the system. Um, but what I also have here is a couple leads coming from my resistors um, on the high voltage side. I've got one lead coming from a resistor hooked to the base of my transistor and another lead I believe um, is coming off the positive rail. I'm not sure I have to backtrack that but there's high voltage going across there. There's a good potential um, but what I've noticed was that if I put a diode on there and try to collect some of that energy um, unless I have a high enough resistance battery um, it's just going to cause the system to draw way more. Well, let me go ahead and turn it on. It's about 1.4 volts in this battery. The system is running right now. See, it was charging at 9 volt. I'll go ahead and disconnect that. But right now, I don't have the LED connected. The system is drawing <coughs> about 20 milliamps. So I'm going to hook up the LED. So that LED right there, let's see if I can hook it straight up. That LED right there is lit um, while the circuit is consuming the, the least amount that it will consume, which right now is about 20 milliamps still. About 20 milliamps. And the highest I can crank it is to about a little under 50 milliamps. So that's about full brightness on 3 volt. <clears throat> and I'm getting just a little under 50 milliamps from this battery. Now you'll notice I have this meter over here connected to these windings I was talking about earlier. Not the windings, but the leads uh, from, a, from the circuit. And I've got about 5.5 unloaded volts there. And um, you can see if, let's just say I was to take, take those and directly short them. You saw, see what happens to the current input goes way up over 200 um, so you know technically I could I could run an uh, LED very brightly from there but it's gonna jack my current up a lot <clears throat> so what I did was I tried charging a 9 volt battery from there and you can see when my current is at just a little under 50 this is the uh, volt the unloaded voltage coming out of this system so let me hook the 9 volt up to it you can see it's actually charging that pretty good um, and it actually bumped the draw down slightly so I'm, a, I'm at about 40 45 milliamps right now running this and um, with that battery hooked up um, I can charge that and run the LED at the same time um, without affecting the draw so that's pretty cool um, and what's interesting is <coughs> right now the circuit is bumped as, as up as high as it will go uh, about 40 milliamps but if I crank that back down the charge rate 
this battery goes way up. So now I'm back down about 20 milliamps coming from the AA. I'm still getting good light from the 3 volt LED, and I'm charging this battery uh, much faster. So it's pretty interesting. It's kind of an inverse relation. Um, the harder I crank the jewel thief, um, the less voltage I get out of, out of here, out of these windings, or out of these leads. So you can see I'm at about 20 milliamps input. So if I crank it back up to get a little more light, higher input, charge goes back down. So let's just crank that back down to where it was. That's where I like running it uh, from about 20 milliamps. So I thought that was pretty cool, uh, the fact that it can charge that battery. Um, if I take this battery off, see it's going back down, 7 point something, hook it back up, Let's jump back up. So that's pretty decent charging um, for 20 milliamps from the battery. Uh, not bad light also. It won't run a whole bunch of LEDs. Uh, but it's fairly simple and uh, just to show you what's going on there let me disconnect the LED from the circuit I'll try to <coughs> hook it back up minus the LED okay so maybe if you can see we've got some light in this neon over here we're still charging this battery over here um, it's still getting something um, but as you can see off the collector we've got this indicator LED lit and this neon has lit up a little bit and that can get brighter the more I crank it up so I've cranked it up as high as it'll go see it's a lot brighter <coughs> and as you can see now, without the LED attached, I'm getting about over 50 milliamps. Of course, the charging is not going down, so let's hook the LED back up. All right, so when I hook the LED back up, current consumption goes down, but then I lose all charging. So it's kind of like a balance. Let's, let's cut that back down. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, for 20 milliamps, I can light 3 volt LED really bright and uh, charge a 9 volt battery. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, disconnect everything. Just kind of show you what it looks like. open this thing. So that's basically what it looks like. You see I've got a transformer there on the right and a transformer there on the left. Just a tip 3055 and um, I'll try to get a diagram of exactly how that's wired but just happen to get lucky with the right capacitor, uh, right transformers. <coughs> 